Hi Internet, so yeah, let's start. Protagonists are the real winners in stories, they always come first. Literally, as the word protagonist stems from two old Greek words, protos meaning first and agonistes meaning an actor. And by the way, proteins, protons, prototypes, protocols and protozoa, all as words come from protos. But we'll talk about that in a second video. Yeah, in the second one, not the first one. But guess what was the first in ancient Rome? Salt. Oh yeah, this fine mineral 99.85% of us without a juicier like to sprinkle on our food for taste enhancement. And by the way, a juicier means the loss of sense of taste. And yes, people with this condition do unfortunately exist. Anyways, salt was used in the ancient Rome as currency due to its rarity, but today you can buy it literally everywhere. The words soldier and salary stem from the Latin word for salt, as the soldiers were paid a salary, salt, and they probably spent it on new leather boots, shields and, well, salads, salami, sausages, sauces and salsa. But they didn't dance salsa, since it originated in New York in 1960s, so I guess no dancing for Roman soldiers. Yeah. Anyways, salt is the main ingredient in all of the aforementioned foods, and if you look at the labels of sauces for example, they added the damn salt like there is no tomorrow. And a salad without a sauce is just awful, let's be honest. And if you eat salad without any sauces on, well, go check yourself for a juicier, my friend. Salami and sausages are known as the salted meats, since the salt was also added to the meat historically as a preservative. Salt was actually our pretty good friend when it came to killing bacteria. Humans used it in Egypt and ancient Rome, as it basically dehydrates the bacterial world, sucking the water out of them and keeping our many meaty meats edible. Plus, it sucks the water from the meat by a process of osmosis, which you've probably heard of by now, making the meat dry and consequently, you know, bacterialess, should I say. Should I stay or should I go? is a song published by the world-famous punk band The Clash in 1982. Before forming the band, their frontman John Graham Mellor, also known as Joe Strummer, had a band called 101ers, named after the infamous torture room 101 from the Orwell's book 1984. Cool. Salt was also used for torturing. The Chinese actually had a pretty brutal method, where they would bring a goat to lick your feet covered with salt. Yeah, no kidding. Eventually the coat would start to lick your skin off, since the salt would dehydrate your skin and yeah, I don't have to explain the rest, do I? Hopefully this method is dead by now. Anyways, meet the Dead Sea, the saltiest lake in the world. And I would be salty too if my name was such an oxymoron. Dead Sea isn't actually completely dead, nor is it a sea, it's actually a lake where a specific type of fungi called Eriotrium rubrum grow in the depths of this salty, salty lake. Of course, some scientists believe that we could use this fungus to grow crops in brackish or salty water, but we'll see about that. Anything the science says, we have to take with a grain of salt, I suppose. Wrong presumptions just aren't worth your salt. I mean, not every man with an idea is the salt of the earth. Sometimes, some ideas just have to be salted away. Of course, I'm not saying this to rub any salt in the wounds of scientists, as I am one of them, but still, don't be salty. Okay, I'll stop now. The first city in Europe is taken as Solnitsata in today's Bulgaria, dating back to 5500 BC. And guess what they did there? Yes, they mined salt. There was actually so much salt that they had to wall the city, to protect it from other salt seekers and saltivores, I guess. Salt also put its mark on the names of Salzach, a river in Austria, which is pretty close to Hallstatt, Hallein and Salzburg. And by the way, if you think about it, brine is basically a salty puddle. Anyways, Salzburg by the way literally means a sandcastle, and Hallstatt and Hallein? Well, just look at the name of the mineral used for salt production. Yeah, it's all clear now, right? But your urine will not be clear when you eat plenty of salt, as your body holds water due to salt easily bonding to it. 
making you urinate less water and more of the, you know, other stuff. Potassium, phosphorus, urea and uric acid. And by the way, it is normal to have a little bit of salt in your urine. Salt also causes higher blood pressure, and while well, upon ingesting more of it, your body forces water into the bloodstream to dilute the salt. And with more water, your heart has to pump more volume of liquids, making the pressure with which it pumps higher, and ta-da, higher blood pressure. Anyways, as you can see, salt is everywhere. In words, phrases, history, our bodies, and even now, in YouTube videos. I guess salt is the real winner here, the real protagonist. Anyways guys, thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Ciao!